Satnam, everybody. Satnam means the true me, breeds the, the true you. Welcome to your Kundalini uh, class for this afternoon. Kundalini is a magical and powerful practice. It's one of the lesser known style and forms of yoga. I fell in love with it about two years ago, and it brings me joy every time to share this powerful uh, technology. So Kundalini is our untapped creative potential. It is the part of us when, which, when awakened, allows us to manifest and build the life of our dreams. Energy is really the capacity you have to meet life's challenges and obstacles. And so in this time, with the challenges and the obstacles, it's really important for us to increase our energy so that we can feel up to it, you know, um, so that we can feel like it's not bigger than us. We're big enough for it. And Kundalini is also the experience of being infinite and understanding the infinite power, the fact that you're timeless and boundless, and really stepping into your magnitude. And so in Kundalini, we work with breathwork, we work with meditation, we work with chanting, um, and also dynamic movement, like all the other styles of yoga. So a Kundalini class is taught by Yogi Yogi Bhajan, um, begins with a, um, a mantra, um, a dial-in, as my one teacher said, it's like turning on the, the yoga channel. So we tune ourselves in, recognizing that these teachings come to us from a long line of teachers, people who have been working to uplift the health of the planet, to uplift the vibrational energy of all of us. And so when we tune in, we're recognizing that we are connecting to this chain. We're also recognizing our ancestors, the ones who have come before us, um, not only our yoga ancestors, but our lineage who has supported us to get to who we are. And also when we tune in, we're recognizing yourself as a teacher. And you're connecting with that part of yourself that wants to heal, to grow, to expand, and to continuously learn, as well as recognizing your teachers, those who have taught you. So when we say Ong Namo, Guru Dev Namo, we are tuning in, we're dialing in, and we are connecting with our highest self. And then at the end, there's a blessing which I'll explain to you. So Kundalini classes with the point to six. Today I'm doing a set uh, to open the heart center. I think we're all being challenged a lot, and I think sometimes what happens in a time of fear or challenge is when you want to close up. But I'm inviting you, my yogis, to keep that heart open, to keep connected to a sense of love, of compassion, for self first. You are going through the most, and it's okay to feel it all. So when I talk about connecting to the heart center and opening the heart, I'm not saying it's all going to be peachy. Part of loving yourself is recognizing the ugliness, the muck, the feelings of anger that come up. There's a lot of hate circulating around. This is the time where it's tempting to go into blame mode. Who did this to us? Why are we here? But I challenge you to keep raising your vibration so that you can stay connected to those vibrations of love, compassion, passion. So that's what we're doing today. We're opening up our heart so that we can feel it all and remember that we can be a host to all of our feelings. So. We'll start by tuning in. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. So I'll chant, I'll chant three times. With anything, if it doesn't feel comfortable for you, if you're not down for that, just um, stay present and do what feels comfortable for you. Caesar will be my live student. So as soon as you've tuned in, I'm going to um, stay out of the um, frame and you'll be able to see the, the guidance. Oh, one other thing is um, in between certain postures, we pull root lock. Um, and that means if you practice pulling mula ban, so the pelvic floor, if you don't practice, it's like you don't want to wee and you don't want to fart. So it's like holding in wind and wee and lifting up your pelvic floor. So when you, you take it at the end of sunset, we'll take a deep breath in. I'll ask you to, like you're putting a double chin in a sense. So holding neck lock. So it's not bending over, but drawing your chin in towards your chest. So make that a double chin, pull your navel, and then hold the breath in and then pull up that root lock. Don't want to read, don't want to fast, hold it in and contain the breath in the body. That's when we consolidate the energy of the posture and then exhale. You hold as long as it's comfortable for you. I don't want you to get lightheaded or faint, but just you know when you need to exhale again. Okay, enough talking, time to do. So let's find a comfortable position. Allow yourself to settle into your seat itself. Move anything out of the way, turn anything that you need to off. And just, you've created this space, you've given yourself this gift. So just do what you need to do to allow yourself to be fully present in this moment. 
gonna bring our hands to our heart center. And you can just rub your palms to begin, stimulating all the nerve endings that we contain in our hands, holding up heat and just connecting yourself with your internal fire. Keep rubbing those palms. And then keeping the heat at your heart center. You can just sit for a few breaths. The yogic heart is at the center of the chest, the level of the nipples. The color is green. The element is air. So we're just going to sit for a few breaths. Breathing into the heart center. Inhaling. Exhaling through your closed mouth. Breathing through the nostrils. Connecting with the messages of your heart. And then after the next breath in, we're going to chant Om Namo Gurude Namo three times. Deep breath in. Om Namo Gurude Namo down to the knees, bow the chin down towards the chest, and I'd like you to begin circling hip rotations, we stirring up that energy, beginning to work our aura, charging the electromagnetic field around us, so keep circling, inhaling as you come up, exhale as you go forward. We're opening up. Last time in this direction, when you're in the center, I'd like you to extend your hands out in front of you. Keep bowing their head down towards the heart. Bow to this magnificent heart. And then walk your hands back towards your knees. Roll up gently. Change the cross of your legs so the side that feels uncomfortable. And now you're going to rotate the other way. And we're continuing to stir. Feel free to bring in some shoulder action. So if you want to sort of circle through the shoulders, feel into the different parts of your back, lower back, middle back, upper back. A few more rotations. Last time, extend out forward, reach the hands, deliberately planting them into the ground, surrender the head down, breathe into the back body, we're breathing into the back chamber of the heart, and then gently walk your hands back towards you as you roll. Okay, so a lot of the first part of the set is actually standing. So we're going to make our way up there. But before we do, my signature pose that I love, froggies, the kundalini posture, a warm up. So you're going to bring your heels together. Okay, coming up onto your toes. All right, so if you can, you're going to 
so okay so this is a keep it bring your hands onto the floor okay so with the froggies try try keep your heels together there we go so um you're going to inhale as you come up exhale bend the knees look up hips down yeah inhale up exhale down see if you can bring your hips all the way down there we go inhaling up exhale down so moving at your own pace sometimes the froggies are rapid sometimes they're slow inhaling up and exhale down you're on mute so feel free to croak if you'd like to visioning those nice and um, bouncy legs of a frog working into the knees opening into the hips Sometimes we can do up to 54 in a set, but I'll have mercy today. Let's just do five more. Inhaling up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, exhale. Last two. <laughs> and then you can shake your legs out. Froggies aren't tense. So uh, it's okay if you're feeling like, whoa, what just happened there? Shake, out, shake it out. And then we're going to come into standing and we're going to begin our set. So bring your hands to your heart center. I'd like you to take Tadasana. So standing, um, feet together, if that's comfortable for you. For some of us, you're more comfortable with the, with the feet slightly apart. So just find a position which allows you to feel the grounded energy. So just drawing up the energy from the feet, feeling like you're stable on um, both feet, rooted at the base, but still extending through the crown of your head. The hands are at the heart center. So you've got options here. So if, you, if you're not menstruating and you're not pregnant, we're going to start off with breath of fire. So breath of fire, I can't see. I can't see. Yeah. Okay. So breath of fire is a powerful breath. It's known as Kapalabhati breathing in Hatha yoga. So what happens is that this is a breath fired from the navel center. And you basically don't think about the inhale and you focus on your exhale. So if you're new to it, I'd like you to actually take your hand to the, your belly and take a breath in. And then as you exhale, push that breath out. Yeah. So pump. So as you inhale, the belly expands. As you exhale, you're going to bring the navel in towards the spine to almost push the breath out. Yeah. So when you breathe out, hand moves closer towards the spine because the belly goes in. Yeah. So it's supported by a strong navel action. Yeah. There we go. If you can see, see where you Okay. If this is sounding intense, or as I said, you're menstruating, pregnant, have high blood pressure, you're just going to do deep breathing. So if you're doing breath of fire, we're going to bring our hands to our heart center and breath of fire until I tell you to stop. We'll be here for about two minutes. So breath of fire is a cleansing breath. It clears the mucus lining. It also expands your lung capacity. It balances the hemispheres of the brain. It detoxifies. So even if you lose it and you come out of it, when you're ready, come back. It takes practice. Sometimes you can even feel a stitch as your diaphragm adjusts. Your breath of fire might be a bit slower. Whatever your pace, we've got about another 30 seconds here. Powered by the navel, stoking up our inner fires.
We're going to end off with a deep inhalation. Hold the breath inside the body. And then exhale. Okay, continuing to stand. We're going to be, I'd say punching through the air. That's what we're doing. So here we get to express and just take out whatever's in your heart, whatever you're feeling. So you're starting off with the hands and fists by your side, elbows drawn back. You want a nice straight spine. So just notice if you're arching your back, you want to still standing with an erect spine. And you're going to be alternating. You're going to push one fist forward. And as the other one comes forward, the other one moves back. So it's a piston motion. Inhaling. So try to coordinate inhaling as one goes up, forward, exhale. So keeping the rhythm of the breath and do not rotate or twist the ankles. So try to keep the wrists, my bad. So try to keep the um, knuckles pointing down. So you might find that the breath automatically becomes deeper. It might develop into a breath of fire. And you keep going. In Kundalini, we say keep up and you will be kept up. One more minute to go. Feel your power. As always, listen to your body. If you need to take a break, you can do that. Otherwise, stay connected with the breath. Let it power you. Inhaling and exhaling. <laughs> Nearly at the top of the mountain. We're on the way down. Last 10 seconds. Give it all you got. We're going to end off by drawing both the elbows back, pull back, take a deep breath in. Hold the breath in the body, pull up on that root lock that I mentioned, create a container and a seal for the energy, allow it to diffuse throughout the body, hold it, hold it if you can, and then exhale. All right, take a few breaths. We're going to stay standing. And what we're doing now is we're going to practice how to just keep swimming, just keep swimming. So we're riding waves of uncertainty in this time. So we're going to uh, basically be circling our arms. You can imagine yourself doing a powerful backstroke through it all. So you're inhaling as the arms go up, exhaling as the arms come back and forward. Sorry, inhaling up, exhale as they go back and down. So now I know Caesar has got a sensitive shoulder, so I invite you to listen to your body, Caesar. If you've got shoulder things, don't force. You can just do one arm. Inhaling up, exhale as you come back and down. Okay, 
Okay, so you're wading through. It might be like molasses. So keep opening your heart up to it. That's not a joke, I know. We're into the last minutes. We're charging up the aura as well. We're charging it up. Feels good to take a break, do it. Non-violence, ahimsa always. Okay, to end off, you're gonna inhale both arms up. Let's take that energy up, reach up, hold the breath inside the body. Hold, pull up root lock. And when you're ready and you need to, exhale. Releasing the arms down. Take a moment, release the shoulders. If your body is talking to you, listen and respond. Feel what it needs to do. And then I'd like you to, um, you're going to sit down now. So you've earned your rest. The rest of the set is going to be seated. So you're going to interlace your fingers. So sitting in a cross-legged position, if you need to bring a foam or anything to support you so that you can sit comfortably. Interlace the fingers with the thumbs touching. Yeah, so you're going to connect your thumbs and then face the palms uh, down. Okay. We'd li I'd like you to bring your hands about four to six inches in front of your chest, inches, centimeters, oh, I'm not sure, but not too far forward. Yeah, just a few centimeters away from the chest. And the action is going to be inhaling, bringing your hands up towards, so you're starting off with the heart center. So from the heart, take the messages of the heart up towards the throat. Yeah. And then as you exhale, push them down through to the level of the navel. Okay, come back up. Inhale, from the heart to the throat. Exhale, down to navel. So post heart, throat, navel. Heart, throat, navel. Your gaze is down, so you... Eyes are not closed completely, but you're looking through a small gap in the eyes. So your eyes are about nine tenths closed. Inhaling up the throat, exhale down to navel. Keep moving, keep breathing. From the throat, from the heart to the throat, down to the navel. I like to think of myself taking the messages from the heart, developing the courage to speak them. And as I exhale, down to the navel, the place where we digest so we can process. Just working with the energy from the heart center, inhaling up to the throat, down to the guts. Inhaling up, exhaling down. The set is also about helping you to move past your emotional defensiveness. Emotional defensiveness shows up in different ways for us. So 
Sometimes it's denial. It can be projection, seeing what we fear, or what we don't want to see in other people. It can be repression. So if you know that you tend to be emotionally defensive, denying things you don't want to feel, repressing them, as you exhale, you can envision yourself pushing down on your defense mechanisms. Inviting the opening, inviting the messages of the heart to travel up to the throat so you can speak them. We're going to do three more rounds. So wherever you are, you're going to end up with an exhale, pushing down. And then once you've completed your three rounds, you can just take a moment to allow that posture to integrate into the body. Okay, you've got an option um, for the next um, part of the set. You can either stand or, or sit. We're going to be chanting. Um, you can do it mentally if you'd like to. Otherwise, you can also um, you can also say the chant out loud. So the words we're saying are sa, ta, na, ma. S A A T A A N A A M A A. It's a variation of the satnam that I said earlier on, but satanama is a reminder of the cycle of, of life. So sa refers to the infinity, the greater cosmos, from which life comes, life or birth, which is ta. Na is death or transformation. And I thought that was quite powerful, that death and transformation are synonyms for each other. And then ma, which is rebirth. So when we say the syllable sa, ta, na, ma, we're tuning ourselves into the continuous cycle of life. So the hands are going to be, um, you're connecting your thumb to your index finger. And then you're going to move the thumb from the index out towards the pinky. So I don't know if this is a moment for me to maybe just come in so I can show you. So when you say sa, your connected thumb and index, ta, thumb and middle finger, na, ring finger, ma, pinky. Sa, ta, na, ma. Sa, ta, na, ma. Sa, ta, so it sees the hands are at the level of the shoulders, so I should have said hands at the level of the shoulders with the palms facing forward. Whether you're standing or seated, sa, ta, na, ma, 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 
sa sa na ma 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 you lose the hand coordination start again sa sa na ma 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 sa sa na last few rounds sa sa na ma sa sa na ma last one sa sa na ma connect the thumb and the index take a deep breath in allow the power of this mantra to circulate through the body these words increase your intuition they balance the hemispheres and they connect you with your destiny Hey, you can come back down to seated. So we're going to end off our set with um, a breathing exercise. So um, you're going to sit with your um, left hand um, on your on your lap, holding Kyan Mudra, so thumb and index finger connected. And you're going to block your right nostrils with the index finger of the right hand. Yeah. So you're going to be breathing in through the left nostril. And you're going to breathe out through your mouth, slightly rounded lips. Yeah. So it's inhale through the left. Exhale through slightly rounded lips. It's a slow and a deep breath in through the left nostril. Out through round lips. got less than 30 seconds to go okay. 
can envision yourself breathing into your heart center. And then you can gently release the hand away from the nostril. Take the other hand into Gyan Mudra, so thumb and index connected. And you're going to watch the natural flow of your breath. Your eyes are closed and your gaze is turned upwards and inwards towards the space between your brow. That's your center of intuition. And you're going to observe the natural flow of your breath. When we talk about observing it, it means being present to your breath. So as you breathe in, experience the fullness of your breath. Feel your body making space for the breath. And then as you exhale, feel that sense of emptying, of creating space. Stay present to the breath, the messages of the heart for the last few moments. And then you can gently make your way onto your back. We take Shavasana to give ourselves a chance to integrate and process the wisdom of our practice. We've opened the heart center. Anything could have come up. Just remaining open, judging nothing. Remaining compassionate and present. Release any control you have of the breath. Please mute your speaker. Invite movement back into the body, wriggling into the toes. Run the thumbs over the tips of the fingers. Stretch out. And then bring your knees in towards your chest, hands around the back of the knees, and you can rock forwards and backwards a few times, massaging the kidney. Roly polies are also just really good fun. We're always growing old and young in our practice. And then you can rock yourself up to seated. We close the practice by blessing ourselves and everyone else who our aura touches and beyond. We tune out with the long time blessing song.
and I'd like to do the version which um, can make sense of that inner child. So we'll say it three times. Um, hopefully you've got the words. If you don't, um, you'll get the hang of it. And then feel free to join in. And even if you don't have the words and you just want to do the hang motion, so you're more than welcome. So what I'll be saying is, may the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide the way on. Okay. May the long time sun shine upon you. All love surround you. You actually have to speak. And the pure light within you guide your way on. Two more times. May the long time sun shine upon you. All oh, love. love surround you and the pure yeah. light within yeah. you guide your way on. Last time, may the long time sun shine upon you. All oh, love surround you and the pure light within you. Guide your way on. We end with three long satnam. Satnam being identified with truth. So sat and a shorter nam. Three times. Deep breath in. Sat. Nam. Thank you for joining and look forward to hopefully seeing you soon on the interwebs or oh, there's two more days. <laughs> okay, we'll be with you in the evening.